is hope and that the government is thinking about them. Absolutely. Um Day. Many people have been talking about that, even we talked about it here in the studio, but how that is one of the Modalities. major highlights of how that speech. Go about yes. It. But you know, like you were saying, the mm. modalities will not be um, the biggest challenge Sorry. in the way that it is done in a very transparent and accountable manner. <laughs> to keep our youth for one month. Exactly. <laughs> Again, the logistics, you know, that also require <laughs> requires is a whole lot, but we see how the federal government and the ministry and ministry of youths uh, would do this but let's now turn to you know other conversations let's turn to the parliamentary issues the federal parliament is the legislative branch of government consisting of three elements the president the senate and the house of representatives each has a distinct role but work in conjunction within the legislative process however 64 years after nigeria's independence the legislative arm still struggles for relevance and recognition in the midst of negative public perception TVC News National Correspondent Jokia Adisa takes a look at how um, the parliament, especially at the national level, has fared so far. October 1st, 1960 marked a significant beginning for Nigeria and its citizens. It was the day Africa's most populous nation gained full independence from the United Kingdom after a degree of self-rule in 1954, Nigeria practiced the parliamentary system of government at the Tafar Balewa The return of democracy in 1999 marked the fresh start for the nation's parliament at the federal state and local government levels 25 years of unbroken democracy the legislature still faces negative public perception arising from the lack of transparency that guides its finances and the take-home pay of members of the parliament the national assembly struggles to change public narratives against it for such efforts remain work in progress calls for a return to parliamentary system of government and replacement of bicameral legislature with a unicameral legislature are still on. University teacher Tayo Batero assesses the growth of the parliament over the years. From what is in the public, in the public domain, uh, legislature have not been living up to expectation. They might have been trying in their own way, but perception is, for those of us in the media, perception is what is important. Where there's a perception that they work more for themselves or for the country, then that's a problem there. The issue of their salary and uh, monthly income is a thing of long debate, and then um, people think that they are, they are not transparent enough. Aladisu Amosu was a child when Nigeria attained independence in 1960. He has been a parliamentary reporter for over 10 years. Mr. Amosu and his journalist colleagues speak on the evolution of the National Assembly. Over the years, have the opportunity to cover the parliament, both at the state and national levels. I think if they've been trying their best, no doubt about that. You have to be in there to know their contributions to national development. We keep hearing different figures. Uh, 30 will come out today and say, they pay me uh, 13 million a month, and that person will deny it. So we, please, uh, I think, I think there's a mistake on the part of the National Assembly. I think they should come out in the open and tell Nigerians how much is the salary of these lawmakers. I'm talking but did they support a unicameral legislature and return to a parliamentary system of government? I think I would still prefer the one that has been operated now because um, it might even be worse when you go to parliamentary where you have few people representing. We are so much in Nigeria. You can't have few people representing about over 200 million people. In terms of saving costs, that may have a point, but that's not everything. You know, the Senate, the House of Reps, they have their, each have their own way of going about government. Democracy, the way we're practicing is too expensive for the kind of economy that we are running. And so a unicameral something would be better for the country so that um, we reduce costs 
and then uh, be able to deploy such funds to other things. Mashu Doshun has been a lawmaker at the state and national levels. He has 17 years' experience as a parliamentarian and still counting. He speaks on the challenges before the parliament and why the public needs to see the legislature from another perspective. But for me, I think the National Assembly needs to come out. And all the legislative arms, there are so many rumors going about on, on everything about the legislative arms. You hear news in the newspaper of legislators collecting certain amounts, being given certain cards of certain words, which are not true. So for me, and those are the things that will turn the people against legislators. Because if, for example, the country is difficult, the things are difficult for the people in the country, and you are saying that a set of people are collecting 20 million, 15 million every month, people will be angry. But these are not true. So I think the legislative arm needs to come out. And let the whole world know there's nothing to hide. We keep talking about um, a legislator being given an official car, which is not your car. That's the car that belongs to the National Assembly. It's just for you to use it for 13 years. But nobody is talking about a minister having 15, 20 cars in his entourage. Nobody is talking about that. Nobody is talking about commissioners using five, six cars. We need to put out everything on the table. Let's come out clean. And Nigerians will see if really the legislators are the devil. Lawmakers are optimistic the parliament will receive the needed support to thrive as the nation's democracy continues to grow. While the citizens long for true representation for members of the parliament, the legislature hopes time and resources will help the sum of government to meet the many expectations of the public they represent. Joke Edsa, TVC News. All right, for more on Nigeria's parliamentary journey so far, we have the governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani, who is joining us live via Zoom. Thank you for joining us, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you for having me. Let's talk about the principle of separation of powers. You've been, at the, you've been the parliamentarian, now you are now occupying the executive seat. In the last 25 years, how would you describe the separation of power in the country? Thank you very much, my brother. I, I think uh, as someone who have, uh, have uh, an experience both as a uh, former legislature as well as now in the executive arm of the government, I can say that uh, the Ford Republic, which we are experiencing at this critical time, uh, which is a privileged system of government, is the best system of government as far as I'm concerned. And of course, uh, I can say that uh, at least we have at least, uh, we are now experiencing about 24 years on, uh, of uh, uninterrupted uh, civilian uh, democratic government in the history of Nigeria, which for me is uh, something that we all have to continue to build on some of the successes we've achieved in the last 24 years. Of course, uh, I also believe that uh, Nigeria is work in progress. There are a lot of things that needs to be looked into. Uh, we need to make a lot of uh, effort to improve certain things. Uh, democracy, as you are aware, is a system that uh, needs improvement almost on a daily basis. And of course, the National Assembly, that's the legislature, has a very critical role to play in entrenching democracy in the country as well as ensuring that uh, there's check and balance. And of course, uh, judiciary also, as one of the most important arm of the government, have to also step up and uh, do what is right. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, democracy is a government where people have to be given uh, what is due to them in terms of not only about development, but the fundamental human rights. Uh, people have a right to certain things that are basic. And that can only happen in a democratic setting. But of course, uh, in a democratic setting, if there's no check and balance, there will be abuses also. So what I can say here is that uh, stakeholders must all come together, the journalists, the workers of civil rights movement, the politicians must come together to entrench democracy. Mr. Governor, a lot of people will agree with you that democracy is actually the best form of government, but what the, where the disagreement is is how we practice it. Some have said that we should go back to the parliamentary system of government that we had before. Um, others are saying we should stay with our presidential system of government. Where do you lie in that conversation? 
And I think uh, if you ask me sincerely, I can tell you that uh, we we know what happened. We know what happened during the uh, parliamentary system as well as the regional uh, settings. And you will agree with me that uh, even at that time, there were a lot of abuses, uh, a lot of people created unnecessary competitions. And of course, uh, that hasn't also taken us to the promised land. So for me, uh, what are we talking about? Most of us ag agitated for the true federalism. Uh, as someone who fought for the internal of democracy in Nigeria, within the civil rights movement, I can tell you what I believe in is certainly ensuring that we have more powers at the grassroots level. I mean, the local government autonomy is a welcome idea. Uh, devolution of power is also very important. So that is for me. But that can only be achieved. Uh, to present system government. A lot of people are talking about parliamentary system government, but yeah. I can tell you that uh, we have not exhausted you, the parliament, particularly the National Assembly, both the Senate and the House of Press, must step up. That is the most important thing. Judiciary must also have to do what they need to do. Uh, because if you ask me, a lot of people are complaining about uh, the current situation in the country when people cannot get justice. Uh, a lot of people have approached uh, judiciary, maybe because of their standing in the society. Uh, nobody listened to them, and a lot of people uh, have been complaining about the situation on ground. So for me, uh, a lot of people have their own position, but as someone who was in the National Assembly, who also fought for the democracy, the democracy in Nigeria, I will tell you clearly, that I believe we need to exhaust this very system. I know where we are coming from. We know the experience of the First Republic. We know what happened in the First Republic. We know actually what happened uh, in the Second Republic. We know what happened in the Third Republic when we had uh, a system where half system was military and half was uh, a civil rule. Now we have Third Republic. So I think uh, we have experiences, but let's not rush into conclusion. That's my position. Yeah, some will even say that as at the federal level is still the uh, uh, separation of power is still something that is practiced and it is enforced. But for you governors across the states, that the state houses of assembly across you know the federation is like an appendage to the executive branch of government, that you guys have not allowed that arm of government to function independently. What is the situation in Kaduna State? Uh, in Kaduna State, it's, it's completely different, maybe because I am also someone who practice, uh, uh, who, let me say, someone who was also a member of the National Assembly in the Ninth Senate, and I also have tremendous experience about the importance of separation of powers and the importance of uh, legislature. Uh, when I was in the Senate, I was given the free hand as the chairman of the Senate Committee on Banking. I know we've done a lot. And of course, uh, on my own, as a legislature, I sponsored about 32 bills. Three of the bills were assented by the president then that have repositioned the financial service sector in Nigeria. And of course, so here as a governor, I believe uh, the most important responsibility of the legislature is to ensure that they of their level in terms of uh, oversight. When I was in the National Assembly, everybody knows what I did. Uh, most of the institutions or agencies under my committee, I encouraged my committee members to ensure that we have uh, oversight functions. We also try as much as possible to uh, look at the budgetary provision and ensure that the budgets are being implemented uh, for the benefit of the people of Nigeria. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, I cannot say that uh, a lot of uh, state assemblies uh, in some states are not really working properly, maybe because uh, uh, of the nature of the state. But in Kaduna and many other states, I can also say, uh, I know some governors that have given the state assembly a free hand to operate. In Kaduna, uh, we have not actually for a day interfere in their own activities. Uh, we allow them to do what is right uh, because we know they are also elected by the people at the grassroots level and they have responsibility 
to ensure that uh, we do what is right. Uh, that is the reason why if you look at our budget uh, process, you also look at our uh, the way we implement our budget, the State Assembly in Kaduna uh, have been very active in the way we run our government and they have they have also been very active because Kaduna State is different. When you look at our State Assembly, about 40% of the members of the State Assembly are from the opposition uh, political parties, 60% uh, are from the APC, so we allow to express himself and the committees are working properly. That's what happens in uh, Kaduna. And of course, as a former legislator, it is important for me to allow them to work independently because I know the benefits. I know uh, what they are doing. Mm. So you, you have talked about um, exhausting Thank this system of people. government. One of the reasons people are clamoring. Uh, the you have not interrupted it was like the government was still speaking. All right, uh, apologies for interrupting you, but no, I, no, no. All right. So you have talked about you know exhausting uh, the presidential system of government. One of the reasons people are clamoring, you know, for us to go back to the parliamentary system of government is that they say that in the presidential system of government, men are empowered over institutions, and that governors especially have now weaponized uh, poverty, and so they keep people down just so that they can get their votes during election. Talk to us about the level of poverty in Kaduna State and what is being done um, by your administration to address it. Well, thank you very much. I agree with you 100% that uh, a lot of uh, effort must be made by the states. But most importantly, that is the reason why Kaduna said here we are in support of the local government of autonomy. Uh, because I know the importance of uh, uh, making sure that uh, development uh, happens at the level of grassroots. That is the only way the people of our state will benefit from the debate of democracy. But when we came in, uh, May 29 last year, we look at the poverty uh, index of our state. And I can tell you here uh, that uh, about 65% uh, uh, of the people that live within the rural areas of Kaduna State, uh, when we came in, we are living before the, below the poverty line. That is a fact. And of course, uh, we sat down with my own team and we look at the situation. We try to look at what do we do to address the problem. That was the reason why the first three months I signed executive order, knowing fully that uh, those people that were below the poverty line, most of them were financially excluded. And today, as we are speaking, out of the 3.5 million, vulnerable, underserved, poor people within the rural areas are now captured by my government, and all of them were on bank when we came in. But today, we open accounts for them. And in the last six months, they have been benefiting from our social intervention support. And that has tremendously improved the level of their economic prosperity. That is number one thing we've done. Number two, we also look at the fact that agriculture contributes about 42.8% uh, of our GDP here in Kaduna. And because of that, we uh, reach out to all the three uh, senatorial zones of Kaduna State, uh, reaching out to smallholder farmers. Don't forget, Kaduna State is leading in ginger in the whole of Nigeria. We are also leading in maize production in the whole of Nigeria. We're also second in soya beans in the whole of Nigeria. So because of that, we know our strength is agriculture. So we decided to invest heavily in the area of agriculture. That was the reason why we budgeted over 25 billion in agriculture. And uh, because of that, we supported our smallholder farmers with seedlings, with uh, tractors that uh, support mechanization and also uh, uh, machineries to support them. And uh, just last month, well, that is about 15,000 metric tons to our smallholder farmers, numbering about 120,000. So that is what we've been doing to support farming in Kaduna State. But don't forget, also we have uh, small businesses that are very important because we know they contribute a lot in terms of employing the people uh, that I've just mentioned, who are poor, who are below the poverty line, 
So we decided to also improve the level of SMEs in Kaduna State using our agency that is Kadeda. And because of that, we supported over 130, uh, about uh, uh, 130,000 households directly and about 7,000 SMEs directly through our intervention. As we are speaking, we are reducing the level of people that are below the poverty line through this social intervention we are doing in Kaduna State. For me, this is key. Governance is about supporting the people so that they can be out of poverty, uh, reducing the level of employment, uh, addressing the problem of education, because for us, education is key in Kaduna State. That is the reason why only last uh, week, we've announced that uh, we have reduced the level of out of school children in Kaduna State. From our own statistics, we realized that in the last one year, we have taken back about 300,000 pupils back to school that were out of school when we came in as a, as a government, because education, like I said, is the greatest level in Katrina State, and we believe we need to invest a lot in education. Uh, that is even the reason why we budget about 25% of our entire budget to education. Another aspect we believe is key in Katrina State is healthcare, which we believe is not a privilege, it's a right for everyone in Katrina State, particularly the children, women, to have free healthcare here in Kaduna State. And as we are speaking, we've equipped about 290 primary health cares. We also remodeled, rebuilt, and equipped about nine secondary health care centers, hospitals here in Kaduna. We have also recruited and employed more doctors, more nurses, more midwives, because we have to reduce the level of child and maternal mortality rate in Kaduna State, which for us is key to save lives. Uh, that is what we are doing, but not to talk ab about our intervention in other areas, which we believe is key, that is infrastructure. We have embarked on reducing the deficit in terms of infrastructure, infrastructure development between the rural and uh, urban areas of Kaduna State. To that extent, we uh, embarked on constructing about 62 roads uh, across the three 23 local governments of Kaduna State. As well as speaking, uh, we have commissioned some of them, and uh, the total number of kilometers, uh, uh, as we are speaking, is about 743 kilometers, uh, as we are speaking. And so for me, is some of the things we are doing as a government. Like I said, uh, state governments have to do a lot. Local governments must also be given opportunity to also participate and have the autonomy that we are all agitating for here in in Nigeria, and Kaduna said we believe in that. And uh, since I came as a governor, we have not touched one naira that is meant for local governments here in Kaduna State. Okay, let me, let's talk about poverty in Nigeria now. A lot of people have been talking about, you know, the hardship experience in the course of the policies of this administration. And some people are saying that the box stops on the table of Mr. President while others are saying that, no, that the president has done enough to alleviate poverty, done enough <coughs> to stem the tide of poverty, but the governors have not really given account of what they've gotten so far from the federation account. Uh, let me uh, try to address this issue because uh, sitting here, I've just mentioned what we've done here in Kaduna State as a government. And I can tell you, a lot of state governors are doing their best. Uh, uh, I can also tell you clearly that uh, President Bola Metunubu have done tremendously well uh, since he came in uh, last year. Because let's not forget, it's not a matter of blame games. No, we have to call a spare respect. Because you see, we should not try to shy away from where we're coming from. Sitting here, like I said, uh, a lot of people are speaking without facts, without data, without statistics. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I covered the financial service sector of our country in the last four years before I became governor. And I was covering about 90% of our financial service sector as the chairman of the committee on banking, insurance, mm -hmm. and financial institutions. And I can tell you, I know where we're coming from. As of 2023, one president, Bola Metinibu, was elected as the president of Nigeria. Don't forget, 
There was a program about 30 trillion printed and was wasted through West Amins, which um, I am is very happy today when Mr. President made it clear to everyone in his own speech that the government have already paid at that. Because that is, for me, is a major problem. When you have a country that is printing money, that was what is causing the problem, this inflation we're facing today in Nigeria. There was a time that nobody can even say the, the amount of naira that was in circulation in Nigeria. The post we lost count of that before Aswaji Bola Metunu became as a president. And don't forget again, people tend to forget this. When I talk about these indices of poverty, uh, I'm just talking about Kaduna State. About 65%, like I said, the rural areas were living below the poverty line. But what of the situation across some region in Nigeria? Is it the northwest? Is it the northeast? Is it the north central? Is it the south south? Is it the southeast? Is it the southwest? I have the statistics. I can tell you, the average of the people that were living before the, below the poverty line, what President Bola Martin became, if you look at the, of the people that were living below the poverty line, why do we, can any, has anyone sat down and asked himself, why, what really happened? Look, we had opportunities in the past. We are talking about now celebrating independence, you know, but can we be sincere? There was a time we had surplus. But we did not save for the rainy day. Now we find ourselves in this crisis. It was not the problem that was caused by the current government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He inherited this problem. But I can tell you, we need time to address this problem. Is it the poverty? Is it unemployment? Is it a problem of uh, infrastructural decay and deficit in this country? We have many other problems. Is it healthcare issue? When President Bola Ahmed Tinubu came in, last year. Let's see, look, look at the, 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 the progress he made in the area of healthcare. Look at the progress he made in the area of agriculture. I can tell you that. I know the support he gave to the government, but most importantly, I know the policies. Most of them are painful because you have to now come with painful economic decisions to address the problem, the decay, the mismanagement we inherited. And I can tell you, is it the problem of insecurity? Which for me is sitting here as a governor of uh, Kaduna State. I can tell you, the insecurity has affected our farmers, have affected our small businesses, but I can take you back to just 2015. As far as 2015, there was nothing like banditry, kidnappings, insurgencies in the northwest of Nigeria. It only started around 2016. We had opportunities to address this problem, but we didn't do anything. Now I can tell you, today, a lot of investors are coming to Nigeria. Many people might not understand that, but they all run away some years ago because of the problem of our multiple exchange rate. People cannot invest in Nigeria really at the patriot. They cannot exit. So people have run away from Nigeria. Now this current government has now eliminated the multiple exchange rate. Yes, I agree. The dollar to naira value is now deteriorating. The, the, our naira. But the truth of the matter is, has anyone sat down and asked why we are facing this problem? So for me, let's be holistic. I know we are heading in the right direction. We don't have to blame anyone. We need to support the current government. I have no doubt in my mind. Nigeria is our country. Let's not publicize this. A lot of people are. It's all about politics in Nigeria. This is our country. We need to come together. We need to support the government. If there's development in Nigeria, we are all going to benefit. So the issue of politics must be healthy, must be responsible, must be reasonable. People shouldn't come as if they were not in government in the past. I'm always surprised when I see people that were in government in the past. Some were former governors, some were former ministers, some were former senators, some were former vice presidents, some were former presidents of this country blaming the current government. And I can tell you, when they were in government, Nigeria had every opportunity to address most of these problems. When I was in China with the president just a few weeks ago, I look at the record. As far back as 1970, our GDP was more than that of China. I can tell you. So why are we at this political situation? Because of mismanagement of the people, 
for the, those that were responsible to now take this country to such a level. They had opportunity, they were leading this country, they mismanaged the resources. They didn't say for the rainy day. I can tell you that. So for me, the uh, blame uh, game uh, was Mr. Governor, over. if we may we quickly come that. in here. Um, I know you are highlighting the, the development and, and what the, the, at, the, at the federal level and what this president is doing. But people are calling for accountability. My colleague Ayo has spoken to it earlier at the state level, especially mm -hmm. with the increase in allocation Addition. since the it's removal of fuel subsidy. Um, they say that whilst the allocation has increased, development at that level has not increased. I can tell you the development, uh, let me speak from our state. Uh, in Kaduna State, the development has tremendous. Uh, if you have anything to do with economy, I can tell you, you have to know the cost of fund. Cost of fund means if you have constructed a road in the last five years at the rate of 500 million, today you construct the same road at the rate of 1 billion naira. That is the cost of fund. Do you know the economics of that? You have to check. That is why sometimes I want to educate people when they don't understand. Again, some of us, just like uh, the president is talking about paying debt, which is, uh, I think, is, is, is real. We have to agree with that. In Corona said also when I came in, every month I'm paying 4.7 billion debt that I inherited from the previous government. But I'm not complaining. Government is about continuity. We have to pay the debt. Just like federal government are also paying the debt. In Kaduna, we're paying 4.7 billion. If you go and check and see our allocation, you will agree with me. And this debt, we only started paying in June 2023. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that, look, everyone in Kaduna State, what we're getting at the moment is about 8.7 billion. And 8.7 billion means we're supposed to have to receive about 12 billion compared to what other states are receiving within the northern Nigeria and also other states around the north. But unfortunately, we have 4.7 billion minus because we have to pay our debt. And these debt are sovereign debts. They are being deducted from the fact allocation. If you go to the management office today, check what Kaduna State government is paying every month. From the foreign debt is about 4 billion. From the local debt, it's about seven, it's about uh, seven hundred million. So this is the fact. So I'm starting with minus four point seven, but I'm not complaining. We are trying as much as possible to manage what we have today in Kaduna. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, governance is about saving the cost of governance and trying to manage what we have. Since I came as a governor, I kept saying. We have not bought a single vehicle in Kaduna for anyone, whether myself, whether the deputy governor or my commissioners. And again, we have reduced the performance bonuses or the salaries of our commissioners, our deputy governor, and myself today sitting here. I'm only receiving half of my salary. Why? Because we have to make the sacrifice considering the fact that we have this problem. And again, we people can talk about what of our IGR. Again, our IGR account is with the Zenith Bank. You can go and check. Our IGR account is with the Zenith Bank. Every month, Zenith Bank is deducting about 800 million from the source because we also inherited a debt where Zenith Bank must deduct 800 million from our uh, uh, IGR account. And I cannot change that because I inherited that. So as a government, I don't like talking, I don't like mentioning, I don't like complaining. It's simply because they're asking that question. If you don't ask this question, I will not tell anyone because as a governor, a I have the possibility to use the, the resources we have to move the state forward. Mr. Governor, a lot of people will say Nigerians are facing the hardship because of the policy of the removal of subsidy at the same time floating the Naira, you know, by the APC-led administration that what we are experiencing today that we've never had it this bad that the level of poverty poverty and hardship in the country you as a governor you know what you are facing in your own states 
are you supporting the, the two major policy of Mr. President of removing that subsidy the time it removed it and the floating of Naya? Uh, look, let me address this one after the other. The floating of Naira, I, I can tell you 100% uh, I'm in support of that because I, like I said, I'm coming from the financial services sector. I know uh, if we don't do that, you will not create healthy competition in the business cycle. And of course, uh, what we used to know is very few people within the country uh, will be supported with forest allocation and majority of the people who are doing joining business, they don't even get opportunity to assess those forests. So for me, uh, if you want to create healthy competition, you want uh, to support local industries, everyone should go and, 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 and be, that if you want to create a level playing field, then that is what is going to happen. Because if you say you are going to control everything, you allocate forests to whoever you want, even if they will go and do run tripping, that for me is not healthy. So uh, that policy for me, I support it 100%. Then the issue of uh, uh, for the subsidy, I think and that's, a, that's a missing gap. What am I talking about? When we came in, we looked at the situation critically. And I, I can tell you, if you go to all the neighboring African countries, whether, whether it was African countries or other countries within Nigeria, uh, bordering Nigeria, you will agree with me. The price of fire today is over 2,000 naira. And I can tell you, a lot of people, or you go to some state, you see a lot of petrol stations, uh, particularly around states that are bordering uh, some countries, some West African countries. And if you are there, I will challenge you to go and find out if they have seen anything for it in the last two months. But this, uh, but virtually, but if you see the report, most of these people, the reason why you don't see petrol in those uh, petrol stations is simply because the people are smuggling most of these uh, petrol to neighboring African countries. And for me, it's something that uh, is also creating a lot of problems because you cannot see the, the foyer. You will go to the queue and you stay there for two, three hours. There's no foyer. There's no availability. So whether we like it or not, whether even if you say the price will be low, you will never see it. You end up buying the foil in the black markets. That is number one. And who are benefiting? The smugglers. The few people that will continue to lie about the subsidy. And again, at this critical time, I can tell you, nobody can tell you that how many millions of liters of, of, of petrol that we are consuming in this country. But people can quickly rush into talking about subsidy. That's the numbers. I can tell you, most of those figures, in terms of the millions of oil uh, that uh, liters were, were consuming in this country, is not true. All this subsidy I'm talking about is a scam by some people. I mean, very few powerful Nigerians benefiting on a daily basis, and that is a fact. So for me, I believe, yes, we have to do a lot to cushion those efforts of this removal of folk subsidy. We need to quickly look at the situation, support the masses of our people, support the poor people, and look at the people that are vulnerable, those that are affected. But the truth of the matter is that in the long run, I have no doubt in my mind, the issue will be addressed. That is the reason why in Kaduna, knowing fully that there will be effect of this oil removal, and a lot of people who are poor will definitely be affected. That's the reason why we have come with some measures to support the people at the grassroots level. That was the reason why. Right. Mr. Mr. Only two weeks ago, like I was saying, we distributed them. We know you want to highlight a lot of this achievement, but we do have to leave the conversation there. Happy Independence Day to you, uh, Governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, let's take a break now when uh, the uh, program, which is the uh, coverage of the 64th Independence Day returns, we'll be talking more about the journey so far um, 